and welcome to another Animating Mathematically with me, Matt. This is my blog here, and this uh, video will be me exploring a mathsy idea and trying to make an animation out of it to later post here on my blog with uh, a little explanation. What I'm interested in today is uh, quasi crystals. I found this article using StumbleUpon, um, and if I refresh the page, um, you'll see this animation here hopefully running, right? Um, quasi crystals, um, they are interesting patterns. Um, they show a lot of symmetry, but um, they don't have translational symmetry, so I couldn't. Um, move this image to any other point and it would look the same. Um, I could rotate it, it has sevenfold rotational symmetry, but even though it has all this uh, structure that you can see and it kind of plays tricks on your eyes, um, it doesn't have the same kind of symmetry as say a lattice of hexagons. Um, the way that you can build uh, pictures that look like this is by um, by putting waves one on top of the other. So a plane wave looks like this image here. And then if you rotated it, you get waves like this. And just by adding those up, you get such complicated patterns as this. So we're going to see if we can recreate this in Mathematica. So a new notebook here. Um, if we're defining a wave, um, it's defined x and y at a time t. So the most simple one would be just say cos of y. And uh, we can do a density plot here of this wave function, wave x, y at a time t. Um, we'll do x between minus 10 and 10, y between minus 10 and 10. We ought to give a value for t Okay, so that's a v just a very similar to their image here. Um, to make it rotate, then we need to think, um, we need to change this from y. So for example, if it was rotated by uh, 90 degrees, it would just be x. Well, if we do sine of theta x plus cos of theta y, have a new variable theta put into here and here, hopefully this will rotate the wave. If we um, manipulate theta between that and pi and see what happens. Right, so we're rotating it. Okay, good. Now, um, we want to be able to add a bunch of these together. So let's write n for the number that we want to add together. Now wave will now be a sum of um, i equals 1 to n. And well, actually, that's sum over theta. Theta from naught to pi, pi over n. But yeah, 1 minus 1 over n so that we don't include the last one because it would be the same as the first one. Uh, let's try that one out. Oh, can't use... Oh, I see. We don't need this theta anymore. Let's manipulate t, even though it doesn't do anything yet. Okay, so uh, that's what happens if we're adding 7 spaced out, let's check out three. Okay, hexagons. Looks correct. Let's maybe get squares for two. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit by inventing the width variable 128 and using that instead. Width, width, width. Okay, so we have a lot of artifacts here because um, it's interpolating the function incorrectly at different places. If we um, increase the plot points, we'll get a better image. But it's very slow, and I want to show 
a way that we can speed this up. Okay. Possibly that's too many plot points. Um, the problem is that this wave function here. Um, wait, let's make sure this is aborted. This wave function. I'll actually delete that because it's depending on it. Uh, whoops. Hang on a second. Let's get rid of this. Okay. Now, say we wanted to generate a table of the values. Um, wave x, y, t, x between minus width and width, separated by 1, same for y. Then, okay, we'll say this is x of, this x is bad, um, we'll call it capital X of t is equal to this. Now, calculating x is, you can see, taking quite a while. Um, we want to be able to speed this up, so let's terminate that. It didn't get a chance to finish, but if we rewrite, if we make a new equation for wave called wave2, we can do wave2, and I'm going to use the compile function of Mathematica. So we want, we want x, which is a real number, y, which is real, and t, which is real. And the output should be the sum. Now, also want to add some options to compile it into C. So compilation target should be C, like this. And hopefully this runs quicker so we can experiment it with it more easily. So now we have a different version of x called x2, which uses this other one here. x2 of 0. Let's look at the timing for that. Cool, so it output in um, a second or something, whereas the previous one I had to end up aborting because it was taking too long. We can um, do an array plot of that. Cool, which gives this nice image, which looks promising. Of course, we still haven't made this dependent on t, so this is x2 of anything will give the same uh, image. So to make it dependent on t, we should add on plus t into the wave function here. So now if we do that, x, it will look slightly different if we increment t. So for example, yeah, I don't know if you can see that very clearly. But we can uh, manipulate this with, with respect to t. And it will do a perfect loop after 2 pi because it's just being added on to this, each of the waves. Let's try this. It'll still be too slow to drag in real time, even though we compiled the function. But we can, we can see what's going on. Cool. Now let's um, experiment a bit with the colouring of the of the image. Um, in the array plot, we will define a colour function, which will be a function of x and uh, it will could be, for example, colour data uh, temperature map. Let's try that of x. Now, the thing about this image here that I like is that um, the wave kind of goes from... It, there's not many sort of intermediate grey colours on it. It's very much uh, white or black, so it's kind of stripy. So the way we can kind of emulate that is by thinking of a function f of x, which will be something like tanch of x. If we plot, if we plot that between x equals 0 and 1, which will be the input for a color function, 
then actually we want to shift it like this. Um, let me just squeeze it like this, right? So the idea is that it'll be very light in color, light in color, and then suddenly switch to being dark in color instead of being um, linear. We still have to add 1 and divide by 2 to make it output in the right domain. But now we have this f of x. I want to put it in here. And it should give more, yeah, it gives more of a banded uh, structure. Let's try a different color scheme. For example, um, aquamarine, maybe. It looks kind of cool, and as we change the T, you'll see the interference patterns changing. Let's try pigeon tones. Okay, this is interesting. And the same thing again. Try a different one, green brown terrain. Okay, cool. So we might want to increase the width a little bit. So if we change that to 200, recompile x2, then we can zoom out a bit here, see? And might see a few more interesting patterns. The one they had there would be kind of similar to doing grey level, because it's all black and white. Of f of x. Okay. Um, so anyway, I think I will try and export a GIF of this um, and put it up on the blog, talking a little bit about quasi crystals and why they're interesting. Um, but I guess the key things here is that I ended up using compile because running this every time in just pure Mathematica was quite slow. But this actually creates a C function. Um, so that we can um, call the function, you know, width uh, two times width squared times, which is for each pixel. This is quite a lot of pixels. And um, yeah, so um, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, I'd really appreciate giving a thumbs up on the video. And if you um, if you have an account, please subscribe. Until next time, thank you. Goodbye.